Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at a bug system add-on that you can use right now in Blender and this is known as Spidefy. Spidefy is a tool set that is made available by the folks at Light Architect, the very same folks that have given us a couple of nice assets and also a lot of cool add-ons that you can actually go ahead and explore. So what is Spidefy and how do you work with it? Now, in most cases, you like to create bugs, you like creepy things walking around and you probably don't really want to spend so much time animating these things and actually thinking about how the behavior of these things will be. And that is why this add-on is definitely your best bet. So today we're going to take a look at how this works and see what and what you need to know before you get your hands right into it. So with Blender simply open right here. How you get to work with this one is super simple. Once you purchase it, download it, you need to go over to edit, go over to preference and do your installation. And once the installation is done, all you need to do is press N on your keyboard and right here you would notice that we have the Spidify. That with the Spidify box system open, that we have a fly section, a crawl section, name it, and also a couple of stuff which we would go ahead and explore. So the first things which I would like to explain to you guys is within these sections, you can definitely click to make a selection of the kind of bug you want to have in your scene. And you really, really need to do this one. You need to name it, all right? So it's very important that you do. So I can name this as 001. Maybe that's the name I wanna give that collection. For this case, I'm just gonna make this one uh, about 100. And then if there's a goal, you can actually go ahead and do that. You can now hit on add bug system. And that is, you know, that's how simple it is, all right? So once you're done with that, press the playback button and you have bugs. There is literally nothing as simple as this. I have actually thought about different ways that someone would have thought about doing these things, but I think this is like one of the most easiest. So just think about how long it's gonna take you to create one of this, animate it, give that behavior to it, and then you see there is actually no collision amongst these things and it just simply makes sense. If you're wondering about the texturing and about the shading, okay, if you switch over to Eevee or if you switch over to the rendering section, you can tell that these things are looking super cool. Let's actually get a good close up of this bad boy right here. Ooh, in Eevee, this looks super nice, all right? It looks super nice. Now think about what it's gonna look like in cycles so with this here you can actually go ahead and specify how long you want these things to fly around your scene and we can just increase our timeline and then press the playback button and you have yourself some very nice box let's jump back over and you can see these things happening and you might be wondering what about collision how do you add collision to this collision is super simple all you need to do is if you already have something existing you can attach that as a collision so for this example i can go in and add a simple plane and let's position this plane right here and i would also want to rotate this so i could actually go like so rotate that scale this all the way up and maybe this is going to be the collision that i want and i can actually position this one right here and then with this selected you need to click on select geometry to collision or select the geometry to collision and hit this button and once you do that automatically this becomes a collider and then we can just press the playback button and you can see this bad boy happening and the beautiful thing with this collision is it is real time and very interactive because right now i can just tap g on the keyboard and move this around and you notice automatically the collision starts working right there and we can actually do this for a lot of things so i can move this over to wherever i think they're flying to and you can also notice, sorry, and you can also notice that they just simply bounce around. They sort of avoid this thing by every means possible. And if you're also wondering, can you build an entire scene around this? Yeah, you can. I mean, if you go ahead and build an entire scene around this, you can also make the walls and make everything around that to become colliders. And that is how easy it is for you to just get your basic setup and get everything working. Something else which we need to take a look at is the crawlers. Right here, you get to see that we have the Black Widow spider, some beetles, bed eating spider, and also the centipede. So let's talk more about how you can add direct these things. Now, if you'd like to have multiple stuff being spawned, you can actually do that. So we can select the Black Widow spider and select the bird eating spider. Right here is where we get to give the name. And let's just save these as spiders. So I'm just gonna call this spiders and add a goal now the idea for this goal is for these things to be spawned and move towards one given direction by default if you don't turn this on you notice that they move in a haphazard form and that is not what we want we want them to go to one place all right so once you have this checked you need to click on the add bug system now with that done all you need to do is 
select this empty or this null object so depending on the software you're coming from and then you can move this to wherever you want and we can actually go ahead and press the playback button and you notice that we have this in spawned and they're moving towards one given direction we can also go ahead let me pause this and push this all the way back and position this somewhere like so all right and press the playback button and let's see what we can get so they are all spawned from that point they're running way way too fast just to come hit up to this position so another thing which we can do is we can increase this so let's increase our timeline and our timeline frame or our frames all right so let's increase that make that a little bit too much so that you guys can see and it gets to this point and it gets to 500 and they start dying out so at i guess at frame 500 we start seeing that they die out and the reason why this is happening is because from where we have our particle system set up the lifetime is set to 500 so how do you set this to last longer so let's say you have an animation and you like this box to be within the scene for over 500 frames so what do you do all you need to do is go right over to where you have your outliner scroll all the way down and find this all right the box system once you find the box system let's bounce this all the way back once you find the box system you go over to where you have your particle properties and then right here is where you get to change it if i scroll all the way down right now you would notice that the lifetime says 500 and we can actually make this 5000 and that's more like it so for those who like to play with this if you would like to work with it there's going to be a link in the description where you can go through grab it and start doing some very nice experimentation with it if you would like to also add some particle system around it of course you can actually use this primitive basic shapes that exist here and you can start doing some very interesting things so the best thing to do is make sure that you have this collider object somewhere and uh, i would actually suggest that they don't stay relatively close to where these things are spawning because once you make them stay that close you just get some very crazy movement around there so position this somewhere like so and then press the playback button to have fun and once you do that once this object spawns and they get to that place they actually avoid it and travel around it and this is also something that i found out that for some reason they just simply travel way too fast and uh, i guess this is going to have some updates over time as the developer is currently working on the development of this but for those who like to actually work with this and maybe you want to find a way around it you can literally have fun working with this one so this is more like it the bug system is pretty cool and it's very very nice anyone who would like to create bugs you want to create some flying insects something that you can use to populate your scene especially if you want to create that sort of feeling around your scene there is now a tool set that can actually get you from point a to point b you don't need to think about you know the modeling you don't need to think about the animation you don't even need to think about the texturing or the behavior there is a tool out there that can actually get you this thing's done and it's very interesting to see that someone out there kind of thought about it and actually made it possible for others to also work with it so link to this is going to be in the description where you can go ahead and take a look at it and for those who like to get some tool sets that they've already made link to that is also going to be in the description so you can do well to check these things out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.